Hey guys, Seppi Frollo Man, and here today we'll be reviewing our Rotar T11. Basically, it's a 5 seat, 20 mile per gallon, two, 197 miles per hour car that has a rear engine, all wheel drive, layout, carbon fiber, under 100k, makes 464 horsepower, and it's comfortable. But now, let's go and check if we can go mudding. Okay, we're in the mud. Heads first. No. We hydro locked it. Because the deep end, and plus it's a flat boxer. A boxer engine, meaning it's more flat, but that's more successful. Susceptible to susceptible 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 susceptible. Oh my god! I can't. When you say a word so much that you forget, like it's a word. Susceptible to drowning. It's vulnerable. Susceptible. It's going to drown like that. Susceptible to. You made it well made, well engineered. Compact SUV. I don't get it, like, when I'm in automatic mode, okay, finally. Like, sometimes, like, it doesn't work. Like, you can't go in rear wheel drive. Oh, I mean, you can't go reverse, I mean. We're now stuck because we're lodged on... T See, I can't go reverse. I'm trying to go reverse. See, it takes a long time to go back in reverse. Come on. We're getting mud on the screen. At least... Yep. Now we gotta go onto the rocks. <clears throat> Why am I doing this? Because knowing that it's kind of an all-rounder, I'm just checking to see if it can go off-roading a bit. Frame cached on frame. It can just on the frame. see any major damage. Also, fun trick, you can grab a wing, then it's gone. What I meant to say is like, check to see if your wing can fly, as mine is like spiraling, spiraling like a helicopter. Oh my god, I'm gonna waste so much time doing this. See, look, look, it's in the air. You may not see it, but it's a tiny speck. It's near the clouds. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down. It's a helicopter. <clears throat> and as you saw it fly, and it's gliding. See, it glides. Look how it's gliding. And as such, oh my god, it's going back, and it lands. Same goes with the splitter. It will fly. Well, it could. Uh, let's just not skip our time for that. Now let's go to the elemental um, test strips. Now we're going to go. On, we're going to go on the um, coarse sand, and it did it very well. Now we got. Now we got to use that. Not Oh my god, not again. Okay, 
now I'll go on the grass. Pretty easy, pretty standard. I don't think like any car can like fail it, unless it's rear wheel drive and has like a lot of horsepower. Then maybe, yeah, but like this, sure it's more rear wheel drive biased, but still, it has a lot of power. And has enough grip. Now let's see if anyone will be a happy camper by just driving this. It slowed slow down a bit, but it still went through. Now hard too easy. Now we bump in, in like 60. Now we were almost to like 100. Still driving in. Ending at like around 40 miles per hour. Now let's see if, if the Dubai police would accept it. I know, like... They would go on the streets, but for fun, let's just do this. And yeah, it's a great sand vehicle. Have problems and need to be able to go on the sand? No worry. Oh god. I sometimes understeer and oversteer in the car. I like it when it's oversteery. You don't get it, like. What I mean by oversteer is like. It can like oversteer enough, but not like oversteer to hit a tree, but like understeer where my back end hits a tree. So the Eskimo is kind of like it, but here's some fun. I want a car that can go corners, but doesn't like like go crash while I'm cornering. And I don't want something that will that feels unresponsive as we're gonna take off that arrow. Because we all know that this is more aerodynamic, kind of. Did you know the most aerodynamic shape ever thought is a teardrop? That's why this, the Porsche is designed like this because it's the most aerodynamic shape. Because, like, like the thought is like when rain falls, we have that teardrop um, shape. So similarly, like that. That's how. Porsche designed it, kind of. Like, teardrop, teardrop shape. Perfect arrow. Because, like, when the rain is falling down, like, it just makes a, like, shape. So, that's why it looks like this. Porsches look like this. But now, we gotta go on the fly of stairs. Now, the fly of stairs is a test of mo maneuverability, mobility, Suspension, engine power, and overall, like, strength. Like, strength is as in, like, how strong the car is. I know automation bodies are strong, but I mean, like, how, like, it can help hold itself against these kind of conditions. Okay. got stuck. And that's on our behalf. But we got it out. And like ride height, power, maneuverability, controllability, suspension, how stiff or how hard. I feel like donks and off-roaders somehow can do it. Donks have high, um, high riding suspension, just like off-roaders, but the difference is the off-roaders are more on tires, while the low riders and uh, donks are more of the rims. Okay, we jump, and we go down. This is where maneuverability hits. You have to be able to like make this turn. You can hit the wall, but this shows like how how much you can turn. First, I gotta look. This part can sometimes get you, and if the car succeeds to go on the other side with some help, like I know some cars I did in the past had some help, but all all that matters is if it can go past the flight of stairs. I don't know why I did that, but... Now we're going to go into space. 
suspension testing to see how family friendly it is. It's very, I guess, in the middle, kind of. You go on the bumps. It's not really soft. It's really like stiff, but I mean, this is a sports car, so it's, I guess it's supposed to be stiff. Nail that jump. Now, can we, should we test top speed? Yes, I think we should. And then later we'll check on. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh god. Now, let's go check the top speed a bit. That should be me, you should not crash. We gotta restart the car because the car was going at an angle and that's dangerous. I feel like a perfect all-round car should be able to corner but like should be able to like handle the rocks. As our splitter falls down but like as we're taking, checking top speed, which is happening now, it doesn't feel fast, but it is. See, it's hitting. Yeah, it takes time, like 150. But I mean, come on, this is like a flat four. You're challenging a flat four with 464 horsepower, yes. It's a challenge, it has to take some time, it'll take its time to go to 197 miles per hour, and trust me, it can go 197 miles per hour, sure it's going here, but it's not stopping, it's not stopping, it's, it keeps on going, it has determination to become faster, 182, we hit 182, come on, please change to 183, yes, 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 Yes. 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 Like theoretically, yeah. It takes like a lot of time, but nevertheless. It goes to 200 miles per hour. I thought it could only go 100. This car can go 200 miles per hour. 201. I thought like just because like the automation graph said it can only go like 197, like it will only go 197. And yeah, the brakes are really good. 200 miles per hour. That's how fast it is. Now let's go for a big question. Can it go mud bogging? Well, the answer is maybe because it has a flat four engine. Flat fours are not good for off roading. Like why does Subaru use them? Well. First of all, it's not this deep. And plus, they waterproof the engines. Well, no, that's wrong. No, take that back. Because, sure, you're gonna have a off-roader. Subaru has like, like a rally car. But that's a dad car car that uses a flat four. Like, have you seen them go in deep mud where their engines are fully submerged? No one has. Because most of the time, Subaru spends their time rallying or going like in shallow water. And plus, Subaru's engines are like higher. So, like, they can like not drown in like areas like this. That's the benefit of a inline engine, though. The inline engine is like the tallest engine because its cylinders are going vertically straight up. V8s are like at an angle where their cylinders are at an angle where it has like more, where it's like shorter, but inline engines have more height. That's one advantage. V8s are like a mix between like low and high, and they're more compact. Flat are have to be. Flat engines have to be more wider, sometimes even longer. Like, you don't even see a flat 8 in any car, really. 
If, if anything, no one has seen a flat 8 in action, or flat... Flat 12s exist, but like, in a road car? I don't think so. Yes, I drink water. So, inline engines have their cylinders higher, like, straight up vertically, and water, it would take, you have to be more deeper, so, I don't know how to explain it, but like, one thing is that the cylinders, where the cylinders are in their intakes are, are relative to if they're going to sink or not. Because Subaru doesn't really like go in like mud bogs, really. They only go for like drier or like kind of muddy. Like, imagine the the path around these mud bogs. That's basically where they go. They don't even go in the water. More like like on the ground, like because they know their engines would flood. As this whole place is basically water. Underneath, there's water everywhere underneath. Proof that everything is a simulation. But here's the thing. This shows that, sure, it can't go mudbogging without drowning itself, but it's like a Subaru. Subarus are fast, have good, kinda good gas mileage. All will drive five seats. Well, the new one does. The older ones had like two doors. But this doesn't have like a rear engine layout, like a Porsche. Like this is rear engine, but a Subaru isn't. Like let me tell you, if Subaru does make a rear en rear engine in car that's like this, and uh, they have like an all-wheel drive five seats, it's basically a recipe for killing a lot of people. And I think that's what Subaru needs right now, a new car. But anyways, that's it for today. I hope you all like it. And yeah, on that note, it's a really good car. It can do a lot of things and it surprised me with the 200 mile per hour. It's a really fast car. It's, a, it's like the roof yellow bird, but anyways, the whole thing is, this video has been great. And that's all I have to say today. Bye guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and please let me know what you build next.